Up next, Alan Quinlan live from New Zealand reacting to the team news. First, here is Andy Farrell saying he hopes that Ireland have saved their best performance to last heading into the final test. Everyone realises the, the, the size of the task in hand, but there's a lot of excitement um, in, in, in being able to deal with that. Um, uh, I think the best part of, uh, of where we're at is that... Um, you know, we we know we can do we know we can do better. I think what we've what we've done pretty well over the last uh, period of time is is have a clear understanding of what our game is all about and and what we need to do to get better. And uh, it becomes more clear and obvious the more that we the more that we push on together. So, albeit we we um, had a, a decent result um, in the, in the last test, uh, hopefully our, our best is safe to last. Alan Quinlan, good morning to you. Good evening to you. Morning, Jar. How are you? Pretty good. Getting excited about this now. Um, and the All Ireland final this weekend. So it's going to be a fairly epic weekend of sports. We haven't even mentioned the uh, the Open yet. But um, the teams have been named as expected. Obviously, Gary Ringrose isn't there. So Bundyaki comes straight in and Keith Earls goes onto the bench. So, you know, it's as unchanged a team as it's possible to have. Whatever bumps and bruises they have are not significant enough for anybody to be out. So it's effectively, minus Ringrose, a full deck for Andy Farrell to deal with. So he must be pretty happy about that. Yeah, I think we probably wouldn't have expected it at the start. Um, the way that he's kind of sel- the, selected, I think, the, the, the team. And uh, we were chatting last week about changes, um, guys getting games and stuff like that. But there's a series decider on the line here now. So um, he'd gone for that continuity again and picking the strongest team possible. I think Gary Ringrose has been out, obviously, as you say, is the only the only change there. And um, I suppose he's back in the team to go out and try and start the game well and continue it. And uh, I, I, I think Andy Farrell gets the mood of the week every, every time. Uh, you know, he's he's saying there about, um, you know, the reaction that you're going to expect from New Zealand. Um, we're all expecting it. Every newspaper you pick up here, it's... Uh, there's um, stories about the All Blacks and their needed to reaction, the pressure they're under, given out about the referee, um, loads of different things, uh, different players under pressure. It's everywhere. It's uh, it's really, really different, different sort of pressure this week. Um, players fighting for their futures, I suppose, and, and the coaching staff as well. So um, it's a strange situation for New Zealand because they don't find themselves in this place position I think back in 2009 Graham Henry was when he took over I think team were going through a bad spell like this and uh, then he went on I think they won they lost th- three games in 32 games after that uh, gone on to win the World Cup so um, it's not a usual thing to happen here but uh, I was chatting to someone I was in the swimming pool today and they were just uh, it's amazing <laughs> the, the way everybody just it consumes them here the rugby and um yeah, so it's a great opportunity for Ireland. I think, you know, obviously we can keep debating and talking over the psychological challenge and what Ireland are going to expect this week. Um, you know, the, if, if New Zealand win the game, it's still a great tour for Ireland. Is that good enough for them, though? Are they kind of allowing that to kind of seep, in, seep into their mentality? I don't think so. I was at the team announcements today and uh, I just think they're pretty focused. They look like a team that are, are ready for a, as as Keen Lynch's uncle said there a ferocious battle yeah and that's that's what they need to do and uh, like the the all black team named seems stronger than any of the teams that they've had so far because it does yeah Retallick and Whitelock uh, are partnered again which <clears throat> means Scott Barrett goes back to the, the back row and we did their analysis piece with Derek McNamara earlier in the week and he was making the point that uh, if anybody uh, from the second row is missing, it weakens the team. For there's a knock-on impact then because you obviously don't have Scott Barrett in the back row, and so the the work rate comes down. But also, like um, Ardi Savea did not really play most of the game. He is a world-class player, and so you add in Whitelock and Savea to the team, and it's a completely different side from the team that took the field for the last 60 minutes last Saturday. Yeah, and uh, Lo Lala, the tight head, probably um, he probably would have started the first test if he was available. Twinga Fassa, uh, Fassi um, ha- played those first two tests at tight head. Um, Havili, David Havili would have started in the centre. I think uh, he's formed for the Crusaders and Super Rugby was outstanding this year, um, as was Will Jordan, I think. 
somebody compared Will Jordan to me the uh, on week one when I asked him how good he was and how much of a loss he was, and he said, "Look, he's he's a modern day Christian Cullen, um, which is a fair compliment to get." So I think of the four that come in, um, you know, obviously White Clock is a huge boost to him, um, just the way he runs their line out and his presence and and uh, experience. Um, it was amazing last week. He was out on the field after the game with the with the extra players who were doing fitness. The guys who only played short period of time and, and some of the other subs. And uh, Sam Whitelock is in his suit and he's uh, he's given water to the players. Um, I just thought it was really interesting that he uh, he was out there involved with them, trying to motivate motivate them. And uh, he's a really important leader of the team. So. Obviously, with Scott Barrett coming into the back row, it gives them more of a dimension in the in the line out as well. And I think they've got the balance share of their back row wrong. Um, and, you know, a lot of rugby people here in New Zealand I was talking to as well during the week. You know, effectively, Sam Kane, Sevilla and Papalihi were three sevens. And, you know, they're all excellent players in their own right. Um, I think Sevilla has taken the number eight role um, and done a brilliant job the last couple of seasons but um, you know concerns about the balance of their back row I think obviously with Scott Barrett going back in there um, he played exceptionally well in that first test so yeah it looks like a very very strong team on paper So does that swing <clears throat> that swing things back in their favour when you're thinking about what's going to happen at the weekend or is the confidence that we got under their skin last week is that important? I think it's important I think this is a different test and one that we've never um, it's new ground, really, you know, because you know it's a long time since we've we've toured New Zealand and played these back-to-back -back games. It's ten years, um, so it's a new experience for these players. Obviously, the experience of beating New Zealand um, the last couple of years, going right going back to Chicago. Um, there's been a reaction every time, hasn't there? After afterwards, the games afterwards, um, and New Zealand have won those games and won them convincingly. I think, you know, it's it's pretty telling what's happened. So the expectation probably in the narrative is that the same will happen again because that's what, what, what history has shown us in the last couple of years. But that's new ground for this Irish team. And um, I, I just think that they've proven that they're a very, very good side when, when they're focused, when they're physical, um, that they can hurt the opposition, they can hold on to the ball for a long, long time and... Um, we actually have a very, very good team if they're fit and well and they're actually playing well. Um, that's probably the key, the collective. Um, I think it, it baffles uh, New Zealand a little bit, particularly last week, just to start again. It, it, it had a sense that these guys are not going away. You know, They've given 40 minutes in the second half in Eden Park when we should have shaken them off. We should be scoring more tries. We should be winning this game by 40 points and they're still here banging away right up to the 80th minute and then to start again in in, in uh, Dunedin so you know I think we, we found a little bit here and some of the other media did as well the, uh, the compliments week one uh, quite flattering and not sure what way to take them but I think they do respect Ireland and uh, deep down there's probably a little bit of a fear now um, but look they're definitely going to come out I spoke to Ty Brown today and uh, you know I asked him about the fear and the uh, the aggression and the anger that they're going to bring, and he said, "Look, we expect that, but uh, and we've got to match their physicality at least. Um, but we've got to be disciplined, I think, and controlled because <clears throat> you get too emotionally involved in 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 the emotion of the occasion, and you can lose focus. So I think Garland have got to just try and click themselves, um, make sure their their fundamentals and their basics are right, Joe, because." Um, the, the breakdown, the, the scrum, the line-out, three areas that um, they lost control of in Eden Park. So it's a, it's, it's a really, really intriguing challenge. Um, probably if you asked most pundits and most people, they'd say, look, we fancy New Zealand to win this game. Um, but for me, the real intrigue, and I love the fact that Farrell said, this is where we want to be, this is the test we want, this is the challenge we want. We want them coming out firing um, and we want to see where we're at and can we handle that? And, you know, that's that's the intrigue of this. Um, the refereeing has obviously been under the microscope 
since basically the first five minutes of the first test and there's been wild inconsistencies, there's been a misunderstanding of the laws. The game itself is actually chaos when you think of how many different uh, people and, and potential uh, law infringements there are in every single play. Uh, this weekend it's Wayne Barnes, is that right? Yeah, it is, yeah. So, as somebody, I think it was Roy O'Connor, pointed out uh, during the week, there was a urinal with a picture of Wayne Barnes' head on it somewhere in New Zealand uh, over the last couple of years. So, nobody really looking forward to having Wayne Barnes referee it this weekend. But what should we expect from him? What are the things that we, we know that he likes to uh, look out for? And are we going to benefit or are we going to be hindered by his performance this weekend, do you think? I, I don't. Oh, no, I think um, he, he is very particular and very good at the breakdown. I think um, I think uh, Leinster's recent kind of experience with Wayne Barnes probably isn't a positive one in, in uh, the, the Champions Cup final. Um, but I think he's an excellent referee. I think he's a really good communicator. Um, and I just think that he there's big pressure on him this week because I'm sure... Ian Foster and his coaching staff would have sent in video clips of Ireland questioning certain things um, looking for the infringements that they possibly made um, and trying to put a bit of pressure on there's a lot of talk here about you know New Zealand not not getting decisions last week I said this year I think I think it was Monday I can't remember Ger, but I think New Zealand ha- had no one but themselves to blame for Around about the breakdown infringements, the things they were put pulled for at, at the breakdown by Jakob Piper, because that would have been highlighted by Ireland um, the week before, and there was clear examples of New Zealand players coming into breakdowns, tackling Irish players onto the ground by the legs, going right past the breakdown. You cannot clear past the breakdown and through to the other side and tackle a player who's standing on his feet and is not kind of part of that. Uh, trying to challenge for the ball if you know what I mean and there was three last week um, so they've got to figure that out themselves if they do the same this week and Wayne Barnes penalises them well um, it shows that they, they haven't learned from that but I think Wayne Barnes uh, he's an excellent referee and um, I just think it's it's he has to be clear calm and not be swayed by the crowd or the intensity of the game or the ferocity of it he needs help from his, his assistants and the TMO as well. And look, you know, Ireland are a pretty disciplined team. I think um, I think New Zealand had issues in that second game. Obviously, certain major issues, big talking points last week, and they've got to be just more disciplined because if you bring that ferocity and fire, you've got to bring a control kind of fury as well and, uh, and make sure you're within the boundaries and the laws. But uh, I don't think Wayne Barnes to be swayed by it. It's a big pressurised game. Um, it's going to be a packed house in in in, uh, in Wellington, and I just hope that he's calm and that you know the Irish players are controlled as well because um, I think it could be pretty ferocious the the, the intensity, some of the hits, and um, this discipline could be a big thing because um, well it always is, isn't it? But I mean, you know, penalties, kickable penalties, stuff like that. Um, he's uh, he's a, he's a big job in his hand yeah. on Saturday night, but I think he's very capable of. Of, of doing a good job. Who's going to win, Alan? I just said it, Jerry. I think, um, you know, it's hard to kind of, it's hard to uh, look past New Zealand given White Lock is back. Um, I think Low Lala, Tighthead, and uh, the two in the back line, Will Jordan and Havili. But this team, um, I just think what they did last week was, was an incredibly impressive thing. It wasn't a fluke, I think. Um, of course, they, they had opportunities when, when New Zealand were reduced to 13 to really kind of hammer it home and go 17 up, and maybe they missed some chances. I think they're going to have to take their chances again this week. And if they if they bring that continuity and, and pace and tempo to their game, they have a great chance. But ultimately, I think New Zealand probably will be a little bit strong for them.